to wrap up the afternoon of all these incredible speakers, I want to introduce Amanda Sardi. Amanda is a survivor, and today is her very first march. Welcome. Hi, beautiful people. Hi, beautiful Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here with all of you. Um, and I'm here to tell a story. So I always detested funerals. Bidding farewell to an individual is not a straightforward motion. Watching the rest of the world stir seems even more agonizing than the loss itself, as though placing a rose on a casket from a funeral home is a cure-all for heartbreak. Reflecting my childhood bears similarities to funeral. Self-assurance from the vexed demon in my consciousness is that rose on a casket, a thorned beauty that could be perceived as a cure-all for heartbreak and an imp that would stroll with me for years. This is my prominence. My youth and purity were deceased, and I was forced to run from the truth of reality. That was the day he put me on his lap. The cross breeze of wind carried the aroma of summer as it played with the white curtains. He told me to come, and naturally, I listened as he was a trusted family member. I was advised that he wanted to tell me something as he put me on his lap and I was told to face forward. I began to question what he was executing as he placed the palm of his hands on my sides, motioning them to my chest. I tried to excuse myself. I was, only, I was advised only a second more as he arranged himself under the waistband of my pants. It was not a single occurrence. I take myself back to those moments. Years later, embarrassment and sorrow is replaced with resentment. His hands were imprinted on my back these abrasions and injuries that never show on a body, but are more profound than anything that could bleed. And for years, he was my wound. Bear with me here, sorry. <laughs> so many of you. Thank you. I wore a veiled and unsolicited A on my chest that would impair my mental health for years. My esteem was at war with misunderstanding from those who chose not to listen. Years I have stood in silence, ready to speak, with hands stretched to the skies, begging. I yearn and I plead with every fiber of my core for the justice that I so desperately speak, seek. And I have been standing at the interment of my childhood for far too long. I am the only attendee. As I stand between aching feet, I hear the tones of children and I marvel why. Saunter a day behind my eyes and understand the fissures of my person. Briefly fill your lungs with the air of my atmosphere and thereafter return to me and tell me the efficiency of your chest. At what point has capacity hit? Brothers and sisters, I can no longer hold the air in my lungs. My capacity is hit and I am considered the lucky one. I am here for our youth. I question how I may have reacted as a child, knowing today that incest and rape are casual interaction to those in power. I ask the crowd to take a moment to digress. At the average reproductive age of 12, of 12, would you ask for help? Would you know at six weeks, based on your sex, sex education, that you are pregnant? What if you lived in Texas? Could someone put a bounty on a 12-year-old that was raped by a family member and attempted to abort after six weeks? What if the bounty was on you? What if it was on your child? What if you were 13? Would that year make a difference? 14, even 15? Texas, the birthplace of Roe v. Wade. This is where the relic will die without a fight. The new heartbeat law is an irrational prohibition at the abortion procedure after six weeks of pregnancy. We, can no, we cannot allow other states to follow suit with one of the most restrictive laws in the nation. Politicians, this is an open invitation for children to be raped and suffer. Where is your humanity? You are not pro-life, you are pro-birth. I plead with you to look at the analytics of Texas, ranking 50th in baby wellness checks, 50th in clinical care for infants, 50th for uninsured women, 43rd in maternal mortality, 44th in school funding per child, and 46th in child hunger. How dare you expect a young person to carry for nine months? How dare you? What if this was your child? 
states looking to follow with this new law mustn't be far behind on their metrics. Before the pandemic, I took a short trip along the, uh, the coastal, <laughs> coastal Maine. During that time, I observed a family enjoying the scenes. Their youngest was created by the universe, brought to an undeserving earth from the skies. I sat on a beached log as I watched her carry a pail of sand with pure delight. Energy poured from her locks of hair, curled with the mist and humidity of the Atlantic Ocean and painted with the finest brushes of the sun's illumination. She was pure and untouched. The fortitude of my soul began to deteriorate as my eyes filled with tears. And my partner asked why I was crying. I responded, one day she will know the suffering of this world. With that, I ask you, has your capacity hit? Thank you. <laughs>